What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have compiled for you a retrograde survival guide. I wanted to make one video where we could talk about each planetary retrograde. Whenever a planet goes retrograde and sometimes there might be four or five planets retrograde at one time, I always get a lot of questions like, what does this mean? So in order to understand how to navigate a retrograde effectively, you need to understand what a planetary retrograde is in the first place. I'm going to put it all into one video. You can use this as a reference. So whenever you hear that a planet is going retrograde, revisit this video to get an understanding of what to expect, what the do's and the don'ts are, what's the point, what's the theme, what might happen, and most importantly, how to effectively work with the energy of a retrograde. Grade. I will have timestamps for everything down in the description box, but let's just get started and let's first start by talking about what is a retrograde. When a planet goes retrograde, it's an optical illusion. From our view on Earth, it appears that the planet is moving backwards, but the planet is not actually moving backwards. It just looks that way due to differences in orbits, but it is moving backwards in degree through the zodiac. It's essentially retracing its steps. So you can maybe guess that when a planet goes retrograde, we are kind of revisiting something from the past. Retrogrades are all about the re's. Revisiting, reviewing, revising, redoing, even relaxing and retreating. It's all about kind of going back and taking a closer look at something. Now, maybe this is a project, maybe this is a person, a relationship, maybe this is something that just has unfinished business, okay? A situation where we need closure. Maybe this is even revisiting a belief system or a lesson or something in our healing journey, but typically retrogrades kind of backtrack track us a little bit so that we can take a closer, deeper, second look at something. Retrogrades get kind of like a bad reputation for being chaotic or being like a negative time. They're really not. I kind of think of retrogrades as sort of like a second chance, a chance to look over something that maybe I missed before or make adjustments to something or redo something completely or even just take a moment to stop right? We live in this like hustle, go, go, go culture. And retrogrades can sometimes pause, slow us down and bring us back into ourselves. Because when planets go retrograde, what happens is the energy of that planet gets shifted inwards. So retrogrades are usually a very introspective time. So retrogrades are not a bad thing. So that's the first thing I want you to know, throw that whole idea out the window. They can cause some chaotic or even bizarre or destabilizing energy, but they're not a bad thing. The sign that the planet is going retrograde in is really important because that's gonna give a lot more context about the theme of the retrograde, what we're gonna be focusing on. Maybe it's something more emotional, maybe it's more something mental, something going on in our mind. It really depends on the sign. So you wanna pay attention to that when a planet's gonna go retrograde. You also want to look at where that sign falls in your own natal chart. So let's say that Mercury is gonna go retrograde in Pisces. You wanna find what house is ruled by Pisces in your natal chart, because that means Mercury is gonna be going retrograde through that house in your chart. So that is a way that you can kind of figure out exactly what area of your life is going to be affected by a retrograde. And then using the sign, you can kind of understand the details, the context, the theme. Now we also have inner planets and outer planets. So the inner planets that are gonna go retrograde are Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And when an inner planet goes retrograde, you're going to feel the effects of that retrograde much more abruptly. The occurrences that that retrograde kind of brings are going to be more in your immediate day-to-day -day environment. There is the outer planets, which is Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Those are planets that are further away from us. So the retrogrades last much longer and we're not really going to feel that retrograde as abruptly. It's going to be a bit more gradual. It's going to be much more subtle and something that kind of plays out over a period of time. So that's why when Mercury goes retrograde, you might get a flat tire right? That's an immediate thing that you need to deal with 
in the moment. Whereas when let's say Jupiter goes retrograde, Jupiter is going to go retrograde for three or four months. So that might be a chunk of time where you are learning something new or diving deeper into your religion or spirituality. So that's something that is kind of drawn out over time and it's a bit more subtle. When it comes to outer planets, you tend to look back and in hindsight, then you can kind of see the big picture of what took place during that retrograde. So inner planet retrogrades, shorter but more noticeable outer planet retrogrades longer but more subtle i also want to remind you guys that as with all other astrology content you see on the internet it's not one size fits all because you have your own unique birth chart so if a planet is going retrograde and it's making aspects to a planet in your own chart then that's going to change and alter the way that the retrograde manifests versus the way that it will for somebody else or the way that it will for us collectively so just keep that in mind it's not one size fits all and it really is going to depend on what's going on in your own chart and lastly before we jump into the planets we need to talk about the shadow period i'm sure you've heard astrologers say mercury has entered its shadow or we are in the venus retrograde post shadow that is a very important part of the retrograde because the pre-shadow gives us a lot of insight into what the retrograde theme is really going to be for us. The things that are going to come up, the things that we are going to be dealing with, revisiting, making revisions on, redoing, taking a second look at. And some people will even say that the shadow period, especially the pre-shadow period of a retrograde, might be even more chaotic or more frustrating than the actual retrograde itself. The shadow period is not something that we want to just brush off or forget about. The pre-shadow period of a retrograde is when the planet initially passes through and moves through the degrees that it's eventually going to retrograde back through. So for example, let's say that a planet is going to go retrograde at 15 degrees of Scorpio. And during its retrograde, it's going to move backwards five degrees. So it's going to retrograde back to 10 degrees. Well, when that planet initially enters Scorpio and it's moving through the sign, as soon as it hits 10 degrees, that's when the pre-shadow period begins because from 10 to 15 degrees is when the planet is initially passing through those degrees that the planet will revisit when it goes into retrograde motion. I hope that makes sense. And then when the planet stations direct at 10 degrees of Scorpio, well, now it has to move back through those degrees again. I know that might sound a little confusing, but that is what the shadow period is. So again, retrogrades can be a great opportunity to have a second chance at something or just revisit something and take a closer look and make adjustments since the planet is essentially just retracing its steps. So now let's jump into the planets. Let's talk about Mercury retrograde. <laughs> so here's the thing with Mercury retrograde. Okay, Mercury retrograde has turned into something that it never was. Mercury retrograde has become so mainstream, like everyone knows about Mercury retrograde. Mercury's in Gatorade. It has become so mainstream that it honestly, as with most things, that become mainstream, it has gotten distorted and exaggerated into something that it really isn't. People are like afraid of Mercury retrograde. I'm gonna tell you this right here, right now, and I want you to remember this for the rest of your life. If your life falls apart during Mercury retrograde, it's not because of Mercury retrograde, okay? There's something else going on and Honestly, if you have a mental breakdown during Mercury retrograde, it's probably not Mercury's fault. It's probably the way that you are reacting to whatever Mercury retrograde is bringing your way, which is probably part of what Mercury is trying to teach you during its retrograde. Because here's the thing with Mercury retrograde. It's not this life ruining, devastating thing. Mercury retrograde more than anything is just annoying. It's inconvenient, it's frustrating, but it should not be something that ruins your life. Remember, Mercury is like the trickster of the Zodiac. Mercury is the type of planet that shows up, causes pure chaos that doesn't even make any sense, and then just disappears. Like, that's Mercury. So Mercury retrograde happens three times a year, 
okay? Actually, in 2022, we technically have four Mercury retrogrades because one of them starts at the very end of the year, but the shadow period is like in December. But anyways, Mercury retrograde happens three times a year and it happens for about three and a half weeks. So this is something that we're all pretty used to. It happens pretty often. Mercury is the planet of communication. It is the messenger of the Zodiac. So Mercury rules our thoughts, our speech. It also rules things like technology, electronics, vehicles, automobiles. It rules travel and logistics. So Mercury rules over your daily commute. It rules over your car, your computer, your cell phone, your emails, your text messages. It's heavily associated with the internet. And I fully believe after my years of studying Mercury retrograde and observing it in my own life and in the lives of other people, I truly believe that when Mercury goes retrograde, its main lesson, its core lesson that it wants to teach all of us and help us with is to help us gain more mental strength and help us to cultivate a more level-headed state of mind. It wants us to learn patience. And I think Mercury retrograde really wants to teach us how to react to frustration in a more positive and optimistic way. It's teaching us to take control of our mind and our thoughts. So if your tire goes flat or your package gets lost during Mercury retrograde, it's just a test of your patience. It's a test of your mindset. Are you going to let that ruin your entire day? Or are you going to let it go and move forward and think positively? I really believe that that is what Mercury retrograde is trying to teach us. I also think Mercury retrograde comes and causes delays because it simply just wants us to slow down. Because Mercury is a very fast moving planet, which is why it retrogrades three times a year. So I think Mercury retrograde just wants to slow us down, bring us back into our minds, right? Because if it slows us down and then also throws like an annoying situation on top of it, then we're kind of forced to deal with ourselves. We're forced to deal with our thoughts. And if you really pay attention to the thoughts that you think during Mercury retrograde, the way that you react to things, your like initial mental process when something frustrating or inconvenient happens, it can really be very eye-opening. It can really help you to change your mindset and to help you think better thoughts, more positive thoughts. Mercury retrograde will also stop us and pause us so that way we can double check our work. I truly believe that when Mercury retrograde causes some delay or it causes some super frustrating and convenience, I seriously believe that it is a blessing in disguise and that there is like a hidden gem in that moment that you are meant to discover, okay? So let's talk about some of the, the do's and don'ts of Mercury retrograde. First of all, there are no rules. You will hear people say never close on a house or sign a contract when Mercury is retrograde because Mercury also rules like paperwork and contracts. However, that's not necessarily true. You can close on a house, you can sign a contract, but there are some things you should be aware of, okay? You should be prepared. Read the fine print. Mercury retrograde is one of those things where you will sign a contract and then later on find out that you agreed to something that you didn't realize you were agreeing to. So if you have to sign paperwork, make sure you just thoroughly read it over. Another thing that I have seen many times is that people will sign a lease or purchase a home when Mercury is retrograde. And then when it's time to move in, they move in and realize there's a lot of maintenance issues that were not disclosed to them that are now annoying that they have to deal with. It's not life ruining, but it's something that they weren't expecting that is adding frustration onto their plate. It's also very important to double check all of your communication. So think before you speak, you will put your foot in your mouth when Mercury is retrograde. Double check your emails, your text messages. It's the type of energy where you will just send the wrong text to the wrong person. You go to complain about somebody on the email thread and you accidentally hit reply all. Things like
like this are bound to happen when Mercury is retrograde. So again, slow down and double check your work. Be mindful of starting new projects. If you can put starting something new off until after Mercury retrograde, I definitely recommend doing it. But if you can't and you have a deadline and you have to start something or agree to something or whatever, then just double check your work. Be careful, be mindful, make sure that you are going slow and you're not missing any information or you know missing anything important that would screw you over later. Book your travel plans when Mercury is not in retrograde. Booking travel plans while it's retrograde could just cause, again, flight delays or maintenance issues on your car or, oh my gosh, always check your GPS address. If you have to go on like a long drive, make sure that you enter in the correct address. You might think you did and now you're going two hours the wrong way. Give yourself extra travel time in the morning when you're going to work. Give yourself extra time for your commute because you are going to be running late to a meeting and then get stopped by a train and makes you turn around and go 20 minutes out of your way. These are very Mercury retrograde things. Take care of any maintenance on your car. If there is something on your car that you've been putting off, every Mercury retrograde, I'm like going around telling everybody, get your oil changed, okay, before the shadow's over. These are the things that are going to cause you legitimate issues when Mercury is retrograde because you didn't take care of it the first time. You didn't take care of it when you needed to. Retrogrades are kind of notorious for being associated with karma, okay? Things coming back to bite us in the ass. Another thing that you'll find with Mercury retrograde is that it may just be a time period where you feel mentally blocked or maybe you feel anxious, restless. Maybe you're very much in your head, you're internalizing everything, you're having a lot of conversations in your mind instead of having them out loud. Maybe your communication is just off. Maybe you're just not getting your point across the way you want or there's a lot of misunderstandings. A really great way to actually work through that is to journal. One of the greatest ways to work with Mercury retrograde energy is to go back and complete unfinished project. Go back and make edits on something. Go back and double check check your work. It's also a really great time to plan instead of taking action. Plan things out while Mercury is retrograde and you can make mistakes and go back and change your mind and readjust something. And then once the retrograde is over and Mercury's out of its shadow, that is when you can actually put those plans into place and take action on those things. So that is Mercury retrograde in a nutshell. It's mainly just annoying. It causes a lot of delays and inconvenient occurrences that we're kind of forced to deal with in the moment. Like something happens and immediately we have to do damage damage control or we have to fix it. So that's Mercury retrograde. It's nothing that's going to ruin your life. Okay, so next up we have Venus retrograde. Now Venus goes retrograde every year and a half and it will be retrograde for about six weeks. Now Venus retrograde is one that can actually be very challenging because Venus is the planet of love and relationships and money. It's also the planet of beauty and value and pleasure and luxury, but I'm sure you can guess that our relationships come into focus heavily when Venus is retrograde. So one of the main things that you will experience, you will find yourself reevaluating your relationships, whether it's romantic, friendship, business. But I think for a lot of people, it's our love life that is coming into focus here. The whole point of Venus retrograde is to help us cultivate a deeper sense of self-worth. So something that you will find when Venus goes retrograde, you will experience this mirroring effect in your relationships. Your relationships will mirror back to you the things that you actually really need to address within yourself. As we know, the relationship that we have with ourself sets the foundation for all of the relationships in our lives. So pay attention when Venus is retrograde. You will see things come up within your relationships that are actually signaling to you things that you need to take a deeper look at within yourself. So self-worth is a huge thing that comes up when Venus is retrograde. And this can manifest in so many different ways. Maybe suddenly you start to experience a lot of jealousy or you start to notice the ways that you're self-sabotaging your relationships or just a lot of worthiness issues come up. It's pretty common that 
Venus retrograde will cause unresolved issues within relationships to kind of creep back up to the surface. Things that we need to actually work through that maybe we've brushed under the rug or just things that were never resolved, something that needs closure. Sometimes Venus retrograde will literally bring back an ex. A lot of times you'll hear that Mercury retrograde brings people back from the past not the way that Venus retrograde does. This will bring back whole relationships. Like you will give someone another chance. You'll give a relationship another chance to either work things out this time or what usually happens is to finally get the closure that you're needing. There might be a lot of lessons that we've had to learn in relationships that kind of come back to test us. Relationship issues can come up. But again, the point here is to help us cultivate more self-love and more self-worth. That way we can bring more balance and harmony into our relationships and we can show up as our best selves in our relationships. Venus retrograde is going to highlight all all of the areas within your relationships that need work. Now, all of these things can still happen even if you're not actually in a relationship. Maybe you're single, maybe you're dating. Whatever your situation is, it's very likely that you're gonna get triggered when Venus is in retrograde. You are going to be revisiting these wounds from past relationships or unresolved feelings or unresolved conflict. It's going to come back because it needs to be addressed. That way you can actually heal. Venus retrograde can be an incredibly healing time because remember, retrogrades take the energy of the planet and turn it inwards. So even though we might be experiencing these conflicts or issues in our external world, in our relationships, it really is going to affect us much deeper on an internal level. It's going to cause us to really do a lot of introspective work and inner work on ourselves as long as you are open to it. If you are open to doing the healing work and addressing the issues within yourself that you need to, that are coming up in relationships, that are prolonging issues or sabotaging relationships, this can be a very transformative time where you can have major, major breakthroughs with yourself, with relationships. So Venus retrograde can be a great thing, but it can also be a very challenging and triggering time. Venus retrograde will also have us doing a lot of reflecting on what we value, what we value in life, what we value in our relationships. And it might really show us that some of the relationships or the values that we have in life are not really serving us. Now, some of the advice you'll hear when Venus is retrograde is to not end your relationship. And because it's 2022 and I'm on the internet, I have to obviously say that if you are in an unsafe, unhealthy, toxic relationship, then yeah, you should leave. But generally speaking, you guys know what I mean. If you're in a relationship and suddenly you guys start to have issues or conflict, don't end the relationship. If you're in a healthy, supportive relationship and Venus retrograde comes and causes some turbulence, it's an opportunity for for you and your partner to connect deeper, to work through issues and to become better lovers and better partners. But you will find that usually relationships that begin when Venus is retrograde, they probably won't last very long. That's not always the case, but it's usually not something that lasts very long. It might fizzle out or end after Venus is retrograde. You might find yourself dating people that are just really wrong for you. You'll also hear people say that, you know, you should never get married or get engaged when Venus is retrograde. Again, that's not necessarily true, although it's probably a relationship where you guys do have a lot of karma to sort out, or there's a lot of healing that you both need that will kind of happen in this relationship. It doesn't mean that like you're doomed if you get married during Venus's retrograde, although I would suggest <laughs> waiting until afterwards if you can. Another thing you will find with Venus retrograde, since it does have to do with our money, it's a really great time to reevaluate your budget and your expenses and come up with a more structured plan for your money. You might be hit with unexpected expenses when Venus is retrograde. You may be reevaluating your relationship with money, but Venus retrograde is a great time to plan financially. Uh, you know, plan your budget, get a magnifying glass and really look at your expenses. You don't necessarily want to make big purchases when Venus is retrograde if you can avoid it, especially if they are like luxury purchases, material items that you don't really need, but you just want. It might backfire. You might make a really large purchase on like 
a diamond necklace and then shortly after you have some super unexpected expense comes up and you've kind of screwed yourself because you spent too much money on something that you didn't need. And also money delays can happen when Venus is retrograde. So you kind of have to be mindful about the way that you spend. And finally, because Venus is also the planet of beauty, it's not really advised to do major like cosmetic modifications when Venus is retrograde. Even if it's just like dyeing your hair, getting a haircut, getting any sort of like Botox or cosmetic plastic surgery, it might really backfire if you do it when Venus is retrograde. Just wait, just wait till Venus isn't retrograde and then go wild and do whatever you want. But it's something that you should be aware of. So moving on to Mars. Mars goes retrograde every 24 to 26 months. So about every two years. And it will be retrograde for two months. Now, Mars retrograde can kind of be a wild card because it can either make us very introspective or it can make us explode. So here's the deal with Mars. Mars is the planet of action. It's how we assert ourselves. It's our drive, our motivation. Think of Mars as when you have a goal that you want to achieve, Mars is how you take action towards achieving that goal. Mars is how we assert ourselves and express our energy. It's our life force energy. But Mars is also the planet of anger and war and fighting. It has a lot to do with our instincts, our reactions, our triggers. Mars makes us move. Remember, when a planet's retrograde, it shifts the energy inwards. So one of the biggest things that you'll find with Mars retrograde is we will internalize our anger. We will internalize our triggers. We will internalize our energy completely. And this is why I say it can be a wild card because for some people, if they internalize their anger, whereas maybe they're used to expressing it, expressing themselves, uh, you know, asserting boundaries, and now suddenly you're finding yourself bottling it up and harboring it, that could make you explode. Another thing that you'll find with Mars retrograde is that unresolved anger from our past will come back up to the surface. So we are kind of revisiting and evaluating our own anger and our triggers when Mars is retrograde. You're starting to put the pieces together and connect the dots and see where where your anger stems from, kind of see the root cause of why you get triggered about, about certain things. So Mars retrograde is actually a great time to resolve conflict within yourself and finally come to peace with it. Now, because Mars is the planet of action and how we express our energy, Mars retrograde can cause us to feel very blocked, very stagnant. Again, we might be harboring a lot of energy where it's kind of like bubbling up inside of us because we aren't able to channel it out the way that we normally would. Mars retrograde can just make us feel really blocked. When it comes to achieving things and moving forward and taking action, you will often find that when Mars is retrograde, you might put a lot of work and energy into something and just not feel like you're actually making any progress. You're like hitting a wall whenever you try to put your energy into something. Or maybe you just feel uninspired altogether. Mars retrograde can make us feel tired or lazy. Mars is all about movement. So when it's retrograde, there's just a lack of movement in our lives. But Mars retrograde is a really great time to plan just like with mercury it's a great time to plan rather than take action you can use mars retrograde as a time for rest and retreat and relaxation again we live in this hustle go 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 culture mars retrograde kind of forces us to just take a seat calm down and don't do anything right now. Mars retrograde can also be a great reset. It can be a time to reassess our goals and reassess our strategy that we are taking towards our goals. So if you are actively working on something and then Mars goes retrograde and it's causing you a lot of issues, it might actually be indicating to you the areas where you need to make adjustments and reassess your strategy. So that is a great way to use Mars retrograde is to re evaluate what you're doing and then plan for the future and then take those steps take that action when Mars is no longer retrograde and the energy is moving forward again. But again, Mars retrograde can definitely cause us to get triggered or have outbursts of anger or have old anger come back up to the surface, but those are all indicators. Those are indicators of where you either need to forgive yourself or forgive somebody else or set a boundary. So get to know your anger when Mars is retrograde. Okay, so now we're going to move to the outer planets. So remember, these are going to be longer periods of retrograde 
retrograde, but they're going to be much more subtle. Um, and there might be change that occurs slowly over time. It's not going to be quite as abrupt and extreme, at least not in the moment. Maybe you do make major changes, but you won't really realize that till you kind of look back in hindsight. So starting with Jupiter, Jupiter goes retrograde every year for about four months. Now, Jupiter is a very expansive and abundant planet. Jupiter is also a lucky planet. It is the great benefic. So Jupiter is all about fortune and luck and blessings, but it's also about expansion, mental and spiritual exploration and expansion. Jupiter is associated with philosophy, religion, spirituality, our belief systems. Jupiter is also known as the teacher, the guru, the guide. So Jupiter has to do with higher levels of education like college, but it also has to do with knowledge and wisdom in general. So when Jupiter goes retrograde, this is a period of time that is all about inner growth and inner exploration. You will find yourself to maybe be more focused on personal self-development. You may be more focused on religion or spirituality or exploring a new belief system. You may also find yourself sort of sifting through your belief system and kind of searching for the truth. Maybe you have been learning about a certain belief system or religion, and then Jupiter goes retrograde and it's kind of like, okay, let's go back and reassess this belief system that I've taken on. Does it really resonate with me? What things do I really not believe in? Uh, Jupiter retrograde can be a time where your faith gets tested, or maybe you start to explore different beliefs that you had been closed off to before. Jupiter retrograde really connects us back to and has us return back to our internal compass. And we are really focused on finding what is true to us and then making adjustments where needed. Because Jupiter is the teacher, the guru, the guide, when Jupiter goes retrograde, we now become the student. And if we're talking in terms of higher education like college, Jupiter retrograde may be a time where you go back and reassess your education plans. Maybe this is when you decide to switch majors or switch schools or go down a different path or something along those lines. Jupiter retrograde is overall about expanding your consciousness and spiritual exploration, spiritual expansion, returning back inwards and finding the truth within yourself. So moving on to Saturn, Saturn goes retrograde every year as well, and it will be retrograde for about four to four and a half months. Now, Saturn retrograde is one of those retrogrades that is really going to depend on the work that you have been doing in your life and on yourself. Saturn retrograde can be a time of amazing rewards. If you have been working really hard, if you have been trying to become more responsible, more disciplined, take control of your life, if you have been putting in the work and learning the tough lessons that life throws at you, overcoming obstacles, pushing forward no matter what gets in your way and taking accountability for your life, Saturn retrograde can reward you greatly. You could finally see the payoff for all of the hard work you've been doing. But Saturn retrograde can also be a major reality check because Saturn is the planet of hard work, responsibility, discipline, maturing, mastery, overcoming obstacles. Saturn is associated with wisdom, but it's the wisdom that we gain through challenge and experience. Saturn is our teacher, our greatest teacher, and Saturn's lessons take time. Saturn rules time. Saturn is slow moving. It's methodical. It puts us through challenges over and over again, so that way we can be triumphant. If you have been avoiding responsibility, if you have been playing the victim, if you've been playing the blame game, Saturn retrograde is probably going to be very challenging. You're going to be met with a lot of resistance, a lot of obstacles, maybe a lot of things just going wrong in your life and really being hit hard with lessons that Saturn's been trying to teach you and you're refusing. You're refusing to do the work and take responsibility. Saturn is the planet of karma. So whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's kind of like when Saturn goes retrograde, we are served the consequences of our actions. So you want to pay attention to the things that keep coming up when Saturn is retrograde. There's lessons in there. The lesson is being shown to you. You are probably being met with the same type of theme, like the same situation over and over again maybe the, th the same theme but in different situations 
pay attention. There's a core lesson there that is needed for you to evolve and grow up and mature and be successful and happy and fulfilled. One of the greatest ways to use Saturn retrograde energy is to come up with a plan to create more stability in your life. Maybe you need to restructure certain things in your life, uh, your day-to-day -day routine or the responsibilities that you're carrying. Maybe there needs to be some adjustments. Because Saturn is the planet of hard work, when Saturn goes retrograde, you might suddenly have like a ton of extra burden and responsibility and work put on your shoulders. It's because it's trying to help you reevaluate. You will see people make career changes or set more boundaries with work or create more of a work-life balance, just restructuring their life so that it's more stable for them, so that it has a solid foundation that they can continue to build on rather than just leaving them to burn out. Saturn retrograde is also all about inner growth and inner work, but it does require us to like actually put work in, like be disciplined, be responsible, make changes and take responsibility more than anything. So moving on to Uranus, Uranus also goes retrograde every year. It goes retrograde for about five months. So it's retrograde for a big portion of its time, like 45% of its time it's spent retrograde. Uranus is known as the Great Awakener. Uranus is the one planet that is incredibly unpredictable. Uranus is the planet of shock and surprises, change, liberation, awakening. It's the planet of rebellion. Uranus helps us to break through our own limitations and dismantle the societal norms that are in need of innovation or are in need of being cleared out and changed completely. Uranus is very unconventional and it goes against the societal norm. And actually at the time that I'm filming this video, Uranus just went retrograde this morning. So when Uranus goes retrograde, it's honestly hard to predict because Uranus is the planet of unpredictability. But the main theme with Uranus and Uranus retrograde is that it's helping us to wake up. So Uranus will come in and create these very chaotic, unsettling and destabilizing occurrences in our lives that are meant to shake us up and wake us up. It's kind of like you got to break down to break through, right? Because a lot of times in order for us to wake up, and like realize that we're asleep or realize that we're stuck in a chain of some sort, it's something shocking has to happen. It has to literally like shake us so that way we open up our eyes and see the truth. That's why it's the planet of awakening. So Uranus retrograde will cause external chaotic events to inspire and cause, be the catalyst of internal change and liberation. Uranus will also, because it is this very quirky, eccentric, out of the box thinker planet, it's Aquarius energy, it will bring us these ideas that are very unconventional, very outside of the box, something that we would never think of before to help us get creative and problem solve and make changes in our lives. So you might find yourself in situations where you're like, I never thought that I would do this, but I'm gonna do this because this makes sense and this is gonna help me. This is gonna cause the change that I need in my life. Um, but it might be very, again, unexpected and just surprising and shocking. So again, because this is an outer planet, it happens on a more subtle level. It, you know, although you never know with Uranus, it is very unpredictable. There could be some major things that come and shake you up, but it's something that's unfolding over a period of time. This is like a five month story of awakening and liberation and change and acquiring more freedom. So by the time Uranus stations direct, you've maybe made some really radical changes that you would have never expected yourself to make over the course of those five months. Moving on to Neptune. Neptune goes retrograde every year for about six months. So Neptune spends half of its time retrograde. Now the effects of Neptune retrograde are very subtle. It's a bit mysterious. It's a bit eerie almost. There's something what's the word cryptic about Neptune retrograde? Here's the thing with Neptune. It is a very spiritual planet, okay? Neptune is the planet that represents the interconnectedness of all things. It's about unity. It's about universal love. It's also kind of like our doorway back into the spiritual astral realm. Uh, Neptune is where boundaries go to die. It's boundless. It's where all of the worlds and all of the dimensions and all of the everything kind of come together as one. Neptune is also the planet of 
fantasy, obviously, for obvious reasons, fantasy, illusion, dreams. It's a very spiritual and psychic energy. But it also has to do with things like film and media, art, creativity, visualization, all of those things. Uh, spiritual practices like meditation, anything that helps you transcend reality, psychedelics, like that is very much Neptune. It's a planet that can be very deceiving because it causes us to wear rose-colored glasses. Neptune puts a veil over our eyes and it causes us to idealize things, to romanticize things. Neptune causes us to see what something could be, the potential, what we ideally wish it was, but not always what it actually is in reality. There's this big illusion with Neptune. So when Neptune goes retrograde, the veil falls. The illusion is shattered. The rose-colored glasses come off. But this happens very subtly. One of the key elements to navigating Neptune retrograde is to truly tap in to your intuition. Do what feels right in your soul because what Neptune retrograde is going to do, it's going to show you these little glimpses, these little bits and pieces, these cracks in the surface of things that you were maybe escaping from, not wanting to see the truth of, things that you were idealizing. Neptune retrograde is gonna poke holes in all of those things, but you're gonna have to pick up on those mysterious little cues. So if something kind of, you know, rubs you a certain way and you're like, eh, something seems off about this, you know, maybe it's a job, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a whatever, who knows? Apply this to anything. You might start to notice the cracks in something and you'll see these glimpses of like the true colors of that thing. But it's very easy to want to put those ro rose colored glasses back on. So Neptune retrograde is really about the veil falling and seeing reality, no longer buying into the illusion, seeing things for what they really are. This is gonna happen subtly over time. This isn't gonna be something that's super obvious. So you kind of have to really tune in, tune into the clues, tune into your intuition and do what feels right. Neptune retrograde can also just be a bit of a wake up call as far as showing us the ways that we escape reality and want to run away from the truth, whether it's escaping into movies, alcohol, video games, food, spirituality, right? That is kind of what Neptune retrograde is all about. The veil is falling from our eyes. We're starting to see the truth, but in order to truly understand and know the truth, we have to tune into ourselves, our own intuition. Finally, we have Pluto retrograde. Now you'll hear all sorts of crazy stuff about Pluto retrograde. Here's what Pluto retrograde is really all about. Letting go of what no longer serves you. Uncovering things that we have buried, that we have suppressed, that we are afraid of and don't wanna deal with. Taking our power back. Pluto goes retrograde every year for about six months. So again, spends about half of its time retrograde. Pluto is the planet of power, control, death, rebirth, regeneration, renewal, transformation. Pluto is associated with things that are buried under the surface, the truth that we don't see like right away. So it's associated with like investigation and conspiracy. Pluto is known as the great destroyer. Pluto will completely crumble and dismantle, and it might not be pretty, the things in your life that are not good for you, that are toxic for you, that are keeping you stuck and chained and held captive. Things that are manipulative or have power over you that don't deserve to have power over you. It's all about letting go of what no longer serves you and taking the power back into your own hands and reclaiming your sovereignty. Anything that is poisoning us, Pluto is gonna show it to us. Pluto takes the darkness and brings it into the light and exposes it because that's the only way to transmute darkness to light. You have to bring the darkness out of the corners that Pluto likes to hide it in and actually bring it out and illuminate it. Again, it's an internal energy and it's something that kind of unfolds over time, but Pluto retrograde will destroy the things in your life that are not working, whether it's like an actual thing, a job, a relationship, or if it's something inside of yourself, a belief system, a limitation, it could be anything. The way that you navigate Pluto retrograde is surrender. You surrender, you let go, and if something is crumbling, if something is unhealthy and Pluto is making it obvious that it needs to go, let it go. Surrender and just let the transformation take place. When you let go and you stop trying to hold on to something that doesn't even serve you, that is when the transformation actually takes place. Otherwise, you're just keeping yourself stuck. Pluto retrograde can be destructive, but it's purifying, and at the end of the day, it's very healing.
All right, you guys, that wraps it up for this video. I hope that this helped you become more prepared when it comes to retrogrades and you can use this as a reference. Whenever a planet goes retrograde, you can revisit this video so you are prepared and you know what to do, what not to do, and how to navigate it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.